Angela Merkel has been in Britain on a mission to reset relations strained by Brexit. It's her last official visit to the UK before she steps down as the German Chancellor. Merkel had w held wide-ranging talks with the British Prime Minister, and there was time for tea with the Queen at Windsor Castle. Angela, how are you? Boris Johnson on a charm offensive as he welcomes the EU's longest-serving leader. This is Angela Merkel's third visit to Chequers, the country residence for British prime ministers. Boris Johnson is the fifth British leader she's dealt with in her 16 years as German chancellor. And her last as she prepares to step down in September. Angela, on behalf of the UK, I want to thank you for your truly historic commitment uh, not just to uh, the UK-Germany uh, relationship, but to global diplomacy more generally. UK this meeting was about resetting relations between Germany and the UK after the tensions of Brexit. After Britain's exit from the EU, it's a good opportunity to open a new chapter in German-British relations and find practical ways to have close contacts. This includes regular government consultations, which we've agreed on. The two also discussed the vaccine rollout, among other issues. Merkel signalling that Berlin could soon relax quarantine rules for Britons travelling to Germany, who've been double-jabbed. It's no secret, though, that the German Chancellor has found Johnson at times difficult to deal with. But she is the queen of diplomacy. We look at how different people are and make the best of it, and that works wonderfully. Merkel finished her British visit with all the pomp and ceremony a world leader would expect. Good afternoon. At Windsor Castle, she had an audience with Queen Elizabeth, and no doubt they had a good chat over a proper cup of tea. Let's take you now to London, where DW's uh, Birgit Maas is following the story for us. Hello, Birgit. Uh, let's start with that uh, press conference. What did we learn about the state of relations between the two countries? Bilateral is really the buzzword of the day because the UK, having just left the European Union, needs these good bilateral relationships. And Germany is, of course, one of the most important partners for the UK. It's an important strategic partner when it comes to trade. It's the second biggest uh, trading partner, but also when it comes to foreign and security policies. And their joint declaration was just uh, published, was just signed between the two countries. But they announced more. They announced more cultural exchange and youth exchange. So really say saying that after this, the end of an era, after the UK has left the EU, that these uh, relations between Germany and UK, they, they need work on, they need, they need strengthening, and they, they really need a constant basically looking after, and this is what they wanted to, to say today. Mm. You know, the Northern Ireland protocol came up during a Q&A. Now, Mr. Johnson likes to refer to this as a victory, and in fact, he claimed it as one. Uh, but this is a real source of friction between... Uh, Britain and uh, and the EU, of course. Yeah, and it's a real problem. I have just travelled to Belfast and spoken to people there, and it is a problem because Northern Ireland is still part of the United Kingdom, but economically it remains aligned to the European Union, and many people there really, really object to it because they feel that they are being treated differently um, than the rest of the UK, so they don't, they don't want it, and we can really feel the tensions in Northern Ireland. However, this is a topic where I think Angela Merkel signalled that this, that this is where bilateral relations also have their limits because she said well we need to not overstretch ourselves when it comes to Northern Ireland she urged for a pragmatic solution but I think she also signaled that this is where the UK and where Boris Johnson really need Brussels and they need to also work on their relationship with Brussels and and make it really sensible one where where they work on on, on, on really tricky problems like uh, like the Northern Ireland issue and Brexit 
And Birgit, what's a, a trip to the UK without uh, having tea with the Queen? In fact, that's what happened with the Chancellor of Germany. Um, was this just a courtesy visit or is there something special here? I believe that for Angela Merkel, really, this will be very, very special. She told journalists when she was in the UK just a few weeks ago at the G7 summit that it was the highlight of her trip, that she met with three generations of the royal family. And we know that she's really a fan of the Queen. So I think uh, for her to be here on a sort of farewell tour and to end it uh, in Windsor Castle, having tea with the Queen, that will definitely would have been something really, really special for her. That's uh, Birgit Maas in London for us. Much thanks as always. Angela Merkel uh, became the German Chancellor back in 2005. Boris Johnson is the fifth British Prime Minister she has dealt with. We take a look back now at how Merkel has weathered the changes. What a moment to visit England. The crowds are already cheering, but not because Angela Merkel is coming. Instead, it's about beating Germany at football. But the Chancellor has seen all sides of this love-hate relationship before. During 16 years in office, Merkel has dealt with five British prime ministers in all. When she came to power, Tony Blair was in number 10 Downing Street. They had big plans together to end poverty and start tackling climate change. Both leaders moved their parties towards the centre. Both were at times hugely popular with voters. But as Merkel's power grew, Blair was replaced by his nemesis, Gordon Brown. He was a very serious man, not unlike the Chancellor. We now need to come together again with heightened cooperation. But while Germans appreciated sobriety, Brown was soon heading for defeat at the polls. Merkel flew in to provide some support but she did not meet her fellow Conservative, David Cameron. Brown lost the election. <laughs> the new Prime Minister wooed the Chancellor with soft diplomacy. In the British Museum, the visitor was shown proof of the British love of German cars. But Cameron's friendly overtures were undermined by his plan to hold a referendum on leaving the EU. Merkel herself was briefly at the centre of that debate when the woman they call Mutti addressed the mother of parliaments. We need a strong United Kingdom with a strong voice inside the European Union. If we have that, we will be able to make the necessary changes for the benefit of all. But her appeals fell on deaf ears. The UK voted to leave the EU. Brexit also brought in Merkel's PM number four. With Theresa May, it seemed at first there was hope of doing a deal. Two pragmatists working together even after the split. In Brussels, a shared sense of colour and a shared sense of humour. Could these cement relations? But the deal on future cooperation agreed by May, Merkel and the other EU leaders was thrown out by the House of Commons. Last in the line of British leaders for Merkel is Boris Johnson. His bullish bravado is a world away from her cool, analytical focus. But even he is willing on occasion to quote the German Chancellor. We in the UK want a deal. We seek a deal. And I believe that we can get one. We can do it. Wir schaffen das, I think, is the, is the phrase. Prime Ministers have come and gone, and Merkel has worked hard to smooth relations with the UK. But politics aside, there's one British leader, Angela Merkel, has always got on with perfectly well.